How clay could have created life on Earth? Hello, everyone. Welcome to Science Telly, the channel where we explore the amazing mysteries of science. Today, we're going to talk about a fascinating hypothesis on the origin of life. The clay hypothesis. Did you know that clay, a seemingly infertile blend of minerals, might have been the birthplace of life on Earth? That's right, some scientists think that clay could have played a crucial role in the formation of the complex biochemicals that make life possible. How could that happen? Let's find out. First, let's go back in time to about 4.5 billion years ago, when the Earth was formed. The Earth was a very different place then, it was bombarded by asteroids and other celestial objects, and it was very hot and hostile for life. But after a few hundred million years, things started to cool down and water condensed into oceans. This is when life might have begun. But how did life begin? This is one of the biggest questions in science, and there are many different hypotheses. One of them is the clay hypothesis, proposed by a Scottish chemist named Graham Cairns Smith in the 1980s. He based his idea on the concept that the original structure that provided for transfer of information could have been a clay-type inorganic substance rather than an organic compound. What does that mean? Well, you probably know that all living things today use DNA as their genetic material. DNA is a long molecule made of four different types of building blocks called nucleotides. Adenine, A, thymine, T, cytosine, C, and guanine, G. These nucleotides form pairs, A with T, and C with G, and make up a double helix structure that can store and transmit information. But DNA is a very complex molecule, and it needs other molecules to help it function, such as proteins and enzymes. So how did DNA and its helpers evolve from simpler molecules? This is where clay comes in. Clay is a type of mineral that forms from silicates in solution. Clay has a layered structure, with each layer made of tiny crystals. These crystals can grow and replicate by adding more layers on top of them. They can also change their shape and structure by rearranging their atoms. This means that clay crystals can have different patterns and variations, just like DNA can have different sequences of nucleotides. Karen Smith suggested that clay crystals could have acted as templates for the formation of organic molecules, such as amino acids and nucleotides. These organic molecules could have attached to the surface of clay crystals and copied their patterns. Then, they could have detached from the clay and formed their own polymers, such as proteins and RNA. RNA is another type of nucleic acid that is similar to DNA, but has some differences. RNA can also store and transmit information, but it can also act as an enzyme and catalyze chemical reactions. Some scientists support the RNA world hypothesis, which suggests that RNA was the first self-replicating molecule that gave rise to life. So, according to the clay hypothesis, clay crystals could have been the first genetic material that transferred information to organic molecules, which then evolved into RNA and DNA. Clay could have also provided a protective environment for these molecules, by forming a hydrogel. A hydrogel is a mass of microscopic spaces that can soak up liquids like a sponge. Clay hydrogels could have confined and isolated organic molecules from the harsh conditions of the early Earth, until they developed their own membranes. Of course, this is just a hypothesis, and there are many challenges and questions that need to be answered. For example, how did clay crystals acquire enough complexity and diversity to encode useful information? How did organic molecules escape from clay hydrogels and form their own structures? How did natural selection operate on clay crystals and organic molecules? These are some of the topics that scientists are still researching and experimenting on. For instance, some researchers have demonstrated protein synthesis in a clay hydrogel 4, which supports the idea that clay could have facilitated biochemical reactions. Others have tested different types of clay minerals and their interactions with organic molecules 5, to see which ones are more suitable for life. The clay hypothesis is not the only hypothesis on the origin of life, and it may not be the correct one. But it is an intriguing possibility that shows how life could have emerged from non-living matter, with the help of some humble minerals. What do you think about the clay hypothesis? Do you find it convincing or not? Let me know in the comments below. 
And if you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe to Science Telly for more awesome science videos. Thanks for watching.